Hello and welcome to Octopus Do. This is Christian Ross. And guess what? We have it all lit up this time. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification icon for, well, notification for when any new videos come out. Today's topic is going to be the lights in my studio. Finally got them all wired together. They're not in their permanent place yet, but I'm just excited that they work. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you about soldering, but not jewelry soldering. We're going to talk about electrical soldering. This one is dedicated to my mom, Helen, my uncles, and my grandfather, who would be so proud of me to find out that I finally learned how to solder wire. <laughs> finally. The lights that I'm using are strip LED lights, and they're really cool. They're very lightweight, very bendy, but uh, they're primarily used for under cabinet lights and lighting around mirrors and things like that. They have several different types out there that change color. You can see the, the blue ones I've had back here just as just laying there as uh, ambient light for a while, but I wanted just bright white lights for my studio because I really wanted to see the true color of my beads. These are considered a daylight temperature light which means they are a bright white, almost a blue white, as opposed to a candlelight or incandescent color, which tends to be a little bit more yellow. That was my criteria in ordering these. You can get them with the adhesive on the back. This has an adhesive on the back that you just peel the sticker, attach them where you want them to go, and they'll stay. Love it. Can't be easier. These came in a I want to say like 30 foot spool. Well, I didn't need 30 feet of lighting. What I needed was several shorter links that I could put under my shelf. Instead of having to buy several different light packages, which would have been rather costly, these had the added benefit that you can cut them and connect them with either pre-made connectors, or I chose to pick up wire so I could solder them together. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. Now I'm going to warn you, we're working with heat. We're using a soldering iron today instead of a torch. The thing about soldering irons, they can get hot. They're hot anywhere there's metal. The only safe place to hold these is along the handle. I know they can get really hot. Speaking from experience. So I'm going to set that aside for now and I'll talk to you about my setup. So we'll go over here. I have a heat resistant surface. This is a solderite board and it's primarily used for jewelry soldering. You can see here I've marked it off for different types of solder, the easy, medium, and hard, but it's also just a great utilitarian, nice heat resistant surface. So I'm not going to burn my nice uh, wood table here. This little light strip can put out so much light. I'm really impressed with that. Very happy about that. In the instruction pamphlet that comes with this, it will explain where you can cut this. So I'm using, you can use scissors, but I'm using my handy dandy flush cutters here. And you can cut this at the line in between these two copper dots. That is the only place where you can cut this. This is my scrap piece. So I'll come here, take my flush cutters. I'm gonna line everything up along the black line right there and give it a snip. Easy as can be. Now, if I were going to join these two pieces together with a three inch piece of wire, and the first thing you have to do is strip the wire because it comes with a plastic coating. You can purchase a wire stripper, but if that's not something that you think that you're going to use a lot, then something that you could use is just being very careful. You can use a craft blade or X-Acto knife. 
which is what I'm going to do. Now, anytime you're using um, a sharp object, you want to work away from yourself because if you're accident prone like me, you don't want to cut yourself. And if you need fine detail work, magnification never hurts because it's always great to see what you're looking at. There we go, ready to work. All right, so I'm holding my wire down and the first thing I'm going to do is the wire, there are two pieces of wire and they're in separate channels. So I'm going to separate those. There's an indention. I'm going to separate those channels. So I take my knife and work away from myself like so. Okay. I can pull that back as much as I need, but I don't have to go far because the space between those copper dots, because that's where we're soldering. The space between those copper dots is not really that big. So I just need to separate these so that I can get a good solder. Then I need to strip the plastic off of these wires because I need to get to the metal. So I'm very carefully, because I don't want to cut the wire, just very carefully carving off that coating. Now again, using a wire stripper is a lot easier, but you work with what you got sometimes. All right, I've started exposing some of the wire. I don't want to get too deep, so I'll flip that over. Start on the other side. There we go. All right. Let's get in there for the details. even use my pliers to grab just the coating and pull it away and come in and cut that coating. Pliers, pull it away, cut the coating. There we go, nice clean wire there. Don't forget to clean off your board because you really don't want to burn the plastic. It doesn't smell great. You see how this wire is a multi-strand wire? What you need to do with this is go in and twist all of these little strands together so they don't flare out and that gives you the most wire in contact with your solder. So you can come in and turn that with your fingers just a little bit, get it to stay together. We've got one, get the other, there you go. So we're ready to solder. First thing is I do not want my strip of light moving around on me. I don't want to have to chase it when I'm worrying about my hot soldering iron and, and things like that. So I just sit it down on my board. You can use any kind of tape, but I have just a little bit of painter's tape here. And really, I'm just gonna tape it to my board. Something I want you to notice about your light strip, you have an indication that that says minus, that says 12V plus. That means that this side is negative, this side is positive, and when you are wiring these together, you wanna to make sure that you always have the positive, positive going to the positive and the negative going to the negative so that the circuit is all flowing in the right direction. Otherwise, it won't work. So we have our heat resistant board, our soldering iron, 
the next thing we need is solder. Now, you don't need to use your silver solder or copper solder or anything like that when you're doing this. It's really not necessary. Um, wiring solder is really inexpensive. And as a matter of fact, I picked up this soldering iron and the solder from Harbor Freight and it came together in one package. So it was very handy to have. So I don't even have to open this tube. The solder itself, I just had to unscrew this lid and the solder itself feeds out the top. And so everything stays nice and clean. If you've ever soldered jewelry before, then this is not new to you, but I'll go ahead and explain how this process works. Basically, you are connecting two pieces of metal with the solder. The solder melts at a lower temperature than either of these two pieces of metal. So if you try to just melt the solder and stick it on there, it's not going to work. Solder flows to the hottest area that you're working with. When it starts to melt, it will flow to the hottest area. So what you have to do is you have to heat up the two metals that you're working with enough so that they melt the solder and then you'll get a good connection. If you um, just touch your soldering iron to the end of your solder here, it will ball up, it will melt, but that's not going to stick to anything. So we're going to make a little sandwich, a little solder sandwich here. So I'm using my flush cutters and I'm cutting just a teeny tiny piece, grabbing that piece of solder with my pliers and be very careful and be very aware of where your soldering iron is because you don't want to back your hand right into that. Believe me, I know. For my wiring, my negative side is the side that's black. So that side is my negative side. So I'm going to lay my wire down on top of the solder, which is on top of the copper, like so. And then apply a little heat and pressure with my soldering iron. Don't try to rush this. You really need patience for this. My soldering iron is heating up that twisted wire, which is heating up the solder underneath it, which is heating up that copper plate. There we go. The solder is starting to melt. Okay. Now, as I pull my soldering iron away, I'm going to blow on it and that will cool it off enough so that it sticks because right now everything's liquid and melty. So I'm going to blow. And there we go. I've got a solder joint. Easy as that. All right. I'm going to do it again on the other side to connect the positive side. Now, one thing I noticed here is my negative wire seemed to be creeping over into that positive area. It's not on top of that positive copper piece, but I don't want it to cross circuit. So I need to move that out of the way. So I'm just going to take my pliers and gently bend the wire without breaking that new join. You don't have to cut off a piece of solder. You can just work. You don't have to cut off a piece of solder. You can just work off of the wire spool. Higher length of solder onto that positive joint and I'm using my soldering iron to move the positive wire over. I tell ya, if I had eight arms, it would be a lot easier. Ah. All right, that didn't work as well. I ended up getting solder on the copper point and solder on the wire, but while everything was still liquid, I lifted up the iron and it didn't stick because it didn't cool off fast enough. So my solder is stuck. So I'm going to heat that up just to get it to let go. There's solder 
on the copper piece and there's solder on my wire. So now all I have to do is grab the wire, place it where I want it to go and reheat everything and it should stick. Here we go. Okay, good join. All right. I know I made it look easy, <laughs> but I had lots of practice because I stuck all of these guys together. I really recommend just practice. It gets easier the more you do it. So if you have a little bit of extra, go ahead and practice a few times. Join a few together before you work on the pieces that you have to have. You'll do just fine. Make sure you work in a well ventilated area because believe me, the, the this puts off a little bit of smoke, a little bit of fumes. I'm going to set this aside so I don't burn myself again. And we'll talk about how to finish this off because yeah, just like jewelry, you gotta finish it off. You don't want all that exposed wiring left out there. To finish this off, I'm using white electrical tape and really it doesn't matter what color you use. I'm just using white because I'm also going to use it to hide the cords on my white shelves. It comes in several different colors, but um, I'm using the white electrical tape. You don't want to use any kind of cloth tape or painter's tape, anything like that, because this actually uh, dampens the electrical current and you're not gonna set anything on fire. After your piece has cooled off, you can pick it up off the board. These two wires, if they were to twist together and have electricity running through them, then you could get a spark, it would short out, could cause the fire like I was talking about. You need to keep the exposed wire away from each other. So I've taken a little bit of the electrical tape, just a piece right here, and I'm going to sandwich it in between these two wires. I've cut a tiny slit in this and I'm just going to slide it in between my wires and up there we go and cover one side so I'm wrapping one side with tape between I'm wrapping one side around and separating it from the other side now I take another piece of electrical tape and just wrap around the entire thing, making sure not to cover up my light on that side. You can daisy chain these together and get the type of lighting that you're looking for. They're great under cabinet lights. They're really nice, bright studio lights. Love them really excited about this. So my next step is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to put some trim on it. It's going to look great. And I'll show you guys what that looks like when I get done. I'm pretty excited about this. So if this was helpful and you liked this tutorial, then go ahead and click like. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below and look in the description below and I'll have a list of everything that I use. Remember to be safe when you're working with heat, but have fun. Now you know, go make something.